What's going on, everybody? It's Jeff and Justin, oh. your favorite frustrated rock stars. Uh. We're back again, live on MP4 with some talk and roll. We love to talk music, so come and join us. Of course, we are at the uh, On the Rocks Tavern yeah. in Sandy Springs, Georgia. We're actually on the patio tonight because it's such they a nice night They make some strong. Out. They make some. And uh, of course, stay tuned for In the Noise and comment commentary. Yes, new features. We have new features. So yes. the uh, topic tonight is uh, rock and roll rites of passage. Rites of passage. This hit me uh, the other day. Someone I was trying to explain the music you and I like to someone younger. Right. And it, it got me thinking that when you and I were kids, well, I really, from like up until, what are we going to call it, the Nirvana generation? Yeah. There were certain rites of passage the, the time when you stop listening to Top 40 or whatever you listen to on the car, in the carpool on the way to school, right. when you went from that to owning your own music right. and getting into music, everybody starts listening, probably with Zeppelin 4. I would or 2. Be, you I mean, started with 4 or 2. 4 or 2. But you went through a Zeppelin phase. It was Zeppelin. a rite of passage. It's kind of like, to me, it's like Music 101. Right. Like, like, from there, these building brought, we all know Dark Side of the Moon, Zeppelin IV, Back in Black. And that's like our base. Right. We all know right. those by heart. We right. don't even have to it's talk like, about it. It's like you know your ABCs, your, right. uh, your adding is right. attraction. Before you can go on to advanced courses, right. like guitar players and producers and what a bridge is, you start out with the basics and you go right. through your Zeppelin phase and your Doors phase. And the Beatles. And that brings up another thing. Did you go through an oldies phase? Yes, and that was my first and phase. And when you rolled it, yeah. Well, that was my first phase. Before what? Before anything. Before anything came... Really? The first meet what, and this may be unique to me, and I'm glad. I think this is one of the reasons I love music so much. I think the best phase to start with is an oldies phase. I got that Chuck Berry and oldies. That explains a lot why you're so into power pop, because that's... The, like, you know, uh, oldies, early 60s music is all short, pop, right. catchy tunes, and you still love that to this day. Mm -hmm. That, that like formed the foundation for what I consider music in my head. I think the first stuff that you really latch on to is what, in your head, you consider music. Yeah. And everything else is measured by that initial yeah. yardstick. So there may be some truth to that, too. What yeah. about um, particular albums? Here's one that I think, and I, I think for you too, I don't know if you said it or our favorite writer, Chuck Klosterman. Chuck so Klosterman. <clears throat> there are two kinds of people. The ones who had Shout Out the Devil as a kid by Motley Crue and those who didn't. Right. That's the first metal album to me that I really uh, yeah, got. Now, now we're getting generational. Uh, outside of our generation, Shout Out the Devil is well, done. Well, let's talk about our generation. Well, our generation. That's the defining, like if you got that album, if that was one of your albums that you really got into, you pretty much probably were on the path to get into, you know, hair bands. It was the gateway drug. Or, it was the metal. gateway drug for metal back then. It was then, the gateway drug. Yes. Yeah. Once you got past having an album with a pentagram on the cover, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. not scaring you, yeah. and digging it and saying, it's okay for me to dig a song yeah. that has devil in the title, yeah. and shouting at him, yes. you're on the highway to hell. Pardon the pun. Yeah, so then ACDC, which right. came out four years earlier, Highway to Hell, was like, oh, yeah, big deal. But to me, Back in Black's more of a rite of, rite of passage album. Everybody, at some point or another, buys a copy of Back in Black Still do. and gets it. That's what I'm saying. Sells a million copies right a year. I'm sure Shout Out the Devil does not anymore. Pretty much, if you didn't grow up with Motley Crue, you're not getting into Shout Out the Devil now. Right. But Back in Black... You gotta remember that for us, we're with, that's one on one. Right. And you and I are in postgraduate work. What I'm here. saying are the people. Well, that, they're still diagramming sentences at 17. <laughs> and but, but, but are they? Uh, but is, is now that Nirvana? Never mind. Or, or you know, Pearl Jam 10. Are those the new albums that are rites of passage for the new yeah, generation? That's a good question. And you know, we may be too old to answer. That'd be great for some feedback from some of your younger mm -hmm. listeners. If you're, you know, for us growing up, usually, and this was, you gotta remember. MTV was just happening. I mean, the only way you really got introduced to music that wasn't on the radio was your older brother. Right. Or the cool kid in the neighborhood, the older guy that was always working on his car in the driveway. For me, it was a cousin. An that, older that's cousin. how you found albums. Yeah. You know, so the question is, are the 15-year-olds today finding copies of Nevermind and 10 in their older brother's record album? Right. CDs. But iPods. <laughs> yeah, does he go through? The, yeah, you go through. You go through your older brother's iPod. And that's and like, whoa, what's this? I don't think you do that anymore. Interesting. No, but could you go through an iPod? You, you could, but I bet they don't. But I think pretty much everybody starts with one of the few, you know, building block rock albums. You right. know, Zeppelin IV, Back in Black, and I don't think that's changed yet. 
I still think Dark Side of the Moon, The Wall, things like that, are people's first rock record. I'm sure for some younger kids, Appetite for Destruction. Appetite for Destruction. That would be a great. Oh. I mean, that's like, oh, you know, the yeah, Rite of Passage album no matter what age. You might as well start there and stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, maybe right. Chinese Democracy will be that. Oh, okay. yeah. Well, uh, speaking of that, that will be in uh, this week's In the Noise. Sign it, drop it, and promote it. And here's this week's story. The new Guns N' Roses song, that sounds weird, the new. Right. It's a legend. It's all a legend at this point. Sure. But uh, there's a new Guns N' Roses song that's going to be released with uh, Rock Band 2, The Game. Right. Anyway, so they're releasing this new song, Shackler's Revenge. Uh, supposedly it's going right. to be on Chinese Democracy, which, of course, Axel has been working on for 10 years now. I would love for Axel to be right and this to be like the, the biggest rock album of all time. I would love that. I don't see it happening, so I'm not that interested in it. I say drop it. He's going releasing on a game. No. Geffen, who has the rights to the album, actually wants to unload it. Supposedly it's been finished for over a year. Right. So that's why these songs, this is the second leak we've had. Right. So, so leak. The, the longer this thing sits, I think, the worse. You know, the, the, get it out there already while people that grew up with Guns N' Roses are still alive. Right. <laughs> right. I'm going to say sign Which it. Which is thumbs up. I say drop it. I'm going to say sign it. We've waited this long. I, I'd like to hear it. I say drop it. It's not going to happen. That's just because you don't done. like these uh, banned video games. You say if you're going to no. spend that much time, you might as well actually learn instruments. Yes, I do. So that bothers you. And All you're right. letting that bleed over. Okay, well, good. That's yeah. what I do. You... Write it and tell them that. Yeah. No one listens to me. All right, speaking of which, time now for comment commentary. All right, here we go. Comment commentary. This week we're talking Where's about uh, what is selling out. And of course, you can view all these videos at thefrustratedrockstars.com. That's right. Or YouTube. That's the best place. In fact, yes. that's where we get a lot of our feedback. The burning of Sodom. The burning of Sodom. This is a YouTube thank user. Thank you for listening. Yes, thank you so much. Are watching? Do they this, watch or do they listen? They watch. They watch. Thank They're you watching for watching. The video. Now, he they is listen. the exact person I was talking about, uh -huh. about Metallica fans. He's okay. the guy that's like, they sold out after Injustice for All. Right. Hands down. He says, right. uh, they specifically marketed and streamlined their original raw sound from the 80s so it could be lapped up by the mainstream and chart buying public on the Black Album. So that I agree with. He, he agree with. But my whole point is that was Metallica's choice. It's not like the record label said, do this. Right. You know, I think they wanted to do it. Yep. So I, I, don't I don't consider that selling out, but, they, but he does have a good point, doesn't it? The fact that they only released three studio albums in 17 years since the Black Album, right? You know, it's a fact. Right. Uh, one being the most panned, uh, Saint Anger, their last album, which, yeah. all in all, not a very good record. It's not. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's not. Yeah, there three, are some good songs. Yeah, but, three good songs. But the, it sounds nothing like you hear on the radio. It's not like they right. were. They were going for a completely different sound, right? Not a commercial sound, no. Just another sound, which really no one likes. So, you can't really accuse them for selling out for Saint Anger, right? At all. Well, you can't go back. But they didn't even go back. They went back, back. They went. <laughs> yeah. Where's the Chris Berman? <laughs> back, 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 back. Yeah. So. Uh, Sports. Reference. So he says they had to uh, scrape the bottom of the barrel for uh, music ideas. Uh, for I agree with that too. Days. I think that they have been scraping the barrel for ideas unless decade, decade and a half. So, there you go. Well, thanks but I for... tend to agree with Burning of Sodom. Uh, okay. I thought that was a book of the Bible when you first yeah. told me we were talking about the Burning of Sodom. But... So, good. Yeah, leave some comments uh, anywhere you want. YouTube, yeah, MySpace, or email us info at thefrustratedrockstars.com. And thank you so much for joining us. No matter Steve. what you're burning from, yeah, it, send, it, us a, send us a little, drop us a line. Join us, drop us a line, wherever you want to do, and we will catch you next time. Love ya. White guys, we take no crap when we deliver our white rap.